I'm often asked by physicians and patients um, as to what is an endoscopic facelift and when do I use endoscopes during facelift surgery. So I think the first step is to define what we mean by facelift. So generally when I think about the face in facelift surgery, I divide the face into three zones. The upper third or the forehead, the cheek area, and the jawline and the neck. And some individuals may need all three areas lifted in what I term a full facelift. Others may only need one portion, such as the brows or maybe the neck area lifted, and some may need two parts lifted. So we customize it according to what the patients need. Now, in terms of endoscopic approach, um, generally speaking, I use the endoscopes to approach the brow and eyebrow area and the forehead area, the mid face or cheek area, and then the lower face and neck is still addressed through more of the open techniques with incisions around the ears and sometimes under the chin. The question often arises is why use endoscopes during facial plastic surgery? And so I can really describe that in four ways, the benefits that is. One is improved visualization. So because we're looking through a magnified telescope, uh, we're able to see structures more clearly and more precisely. Number two, the procedure requires that there be almost no bleeding because you wouldn't be able to see through a magnified telescope otherwise. So less bleeding means less bruising and less recovery time postoperatively. The second reason would be the need for smaller incisions. So basically we're working through very small incisions behind the hairline, plus one up inside the mouth under your lip, as high as you can put your tongue. And so we're working through these small incisions to access these areas that are difficult to access, namely the entire brow and cheek area. And so because we're using small incisions, um, after all it is plastic surgery, we want very few scars and try to hide them well, but we have any, you know, much lower incidence of any kind of hair loss or numbness afterwards. Um, the third reason would be lasting results. We're working in a layer that is right on the bone, and when we lift and suspend those layers and secure them in a proper fashion, that layer is relatively inelastic, meaning that it maintains that um, adherence to the bone in the new level, in the new suspended level, and so that gives longevity to the result as opposed to just relying upon the skin or fatty tissues which tend to stretch over time. And the fourth reason, and the most important, is the natural appearing result that everyone seeks. So, what I mean by that is that we tend to age in a vertical direction rather than in a front to back direction. So prior attempts to lift the cheek area specifically were either done through the lower eyelid, which can result in lower eyelid malposition, or they're done around the ears. And the problem with that is often the incision is at the front of the hairline and it's still in a relatively front to back direction. When we go from above with, a with the telescope, with the endoscopic approach, we're lifting in a vertical direction. So again, restoring tissues vertically upwards takes them back to the, where they once were, which gives the most natural appearing results and maintains your identity.